Richard wrote a book called UFOs and the National Security State, two volumes. He's working on his third volume. He's also written a book called After Disclosure, AD, After Disclosure. Like, what will be the consequences when this information comes forward and it's shared publicly by government officials? And he's working on a new book called UFOs in the for the 21st Century Mind, which will be a real great primer for all your, the people out there who have relatives and you tell them about this and they say, yeah, right. This is the book. <laughs> this is the book, this is why he wrote this book because um, we know it, but there's a lot of people there who say, yeah, show me, but it's, it's so vast the topic that you need to just give them something and say, here, read this. Okay, now we have my good friend, Duncan Cameron, who's world-renowned, yeah. If you thought the movie was interesting, Duncan has had experiences that are beyond anything we can imagine, and um, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit, if you're sure. comfortable. <laughs> or not. And, um, and so uh, we have some interesting things Duncan's going to say about some of his interactions. When we meet the other, it's not like you're going to sit around and have coffee with these beings. There's no sense of reality that we can put them into. So there's an initial um, scream, trauma, um, a disconnect with reality. Why do you pick up on that, Richard? Because you and, and, and talking about the UFO mind and talking about the way society needs to adjust to the uh, disclosure contact process. Sure. Well, I think that uh, we're, we really struggle to, uh, to grasp what we're dealing with. And that's one of the reasons why there still hasn't been this open acknowledgement because uh, we, we just, I don't think that we're operating on the level that these other beings are operating on. They deal with us, it seems to me, on the terms that they, they choose, uh, by and large. And, um, you know, w one thing that I've noticed in speaking with quite a number of people who have had, I, what I think are genuine experiences with these other beings, is that they're, they are traumatized. It's not always an awful, awful experience, but um, I'll just give you a couple of generic examples that are totally true. Um, a woman who um, had an experience 40 years ago, she's a highly sophisticated, accomplished lady, a prominent writer, and had not spoken to anybody for 40 years about what she had experienced until I got to speak to her. And uh, she started hyperventilating two minutes into our discussion. And her heart started racing, and about five times I had to say, just slow down, slow down, slow down. And it took a long time to get through it. Another guy that I interviewed, a truck driver, had an experience 30 years before, same thing. And he had not spoken to anyone. Um, when they start reliving what they dealt with, it's so difficult for them to talk about this. They've gone through something that they don't really know how to process. They've not felt that they could speak to other people about this. Not spouses, not even best friends frequently. And so it's so they 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 deal with something, and there are others as well, of course, who've dealt with things that are uh, beyond what we're normally accustomed to dealing with in our, our waking life. And um, so think about like I when I was uh, trying to puzzle through this whole after disclosure scenario, uh, one of the things I kept running into was how how would um, this affect our whole culture if if it comes out and admitted what many of us already know, which is that there are these others that are here. And um, I, I, I can't but, but think it would be an utterly revolutionary kind of event in our culture. Like nothing we've ever seen before. Like, no, like, yeah. I mean, you know, we thought, think about the JFK assassination, we think of 9-11, and I think this, this would be, I mean, really, without minute diminishing those, this would be beyond that. It would re redefine who we are, and then it would also reinforce the point that there we're we're not at the top of our food chain. Uh, not that they're here to eat us, but that there there are other beings who have got significant advances over what we have in so many ways. Uh, we're we're really I don't think that we're really at the level or as a society in general that we're ready to deal with 
with this reality, but that's not going to stop it from happening. That's the whole thing. It's like, I often feel like no parent's ever ready for their first child, but that doesn't stop the child from coming. And, you know, uh, but boom, there it is. And then you have to just roll with it. You have to learn, you have to deal with it. And uh, this, this is going to happen. And we, most people, we all have family, we all have relatives, and we know they're not all on the kind of page that we're on. Uh, they live in a totally different reality. And uh, I ask myself, in our society, are there any th things in our society, our culture, our politics, our media, that are getting us ready for that? And I think, not really. But it's going to happen. This is an inevitability. So it'll be a tremendous shock. I think a lot of people will be kind of traumatized by the new reality, but I think many people will do well, that's it. That's why I call my program New Realities. But 